次は、えー、ヘルペンホーグさんによる、えー、エレクトロンという、ね、セッションになります。よろしくお願いいたします。<笑>はい。A little while ago,、uh, which was awesome. So, for those of you who have not heard of Atom, it is a text editor.、Um, it's free, it's open source, and it is,、uh, it's written by, by GitHub. So, this is a picture of Atom with Atom's code open. So, Atom is a desktop application. And as a desktop application, it has all the trimmings, all of the features that you would expect in a desktop application. It has a menu. It has menus. It has an icon you can put in the dock.、Um, it interacts with the file system. It can open and save files. It can watch files.、Um, you can have keyboard shortcuts. All of these things that you have come to expect from every other desktop app. It's pretty standard stuff. But the coolest part about Atom, thank you, the coolest part about Atom that it is, is that it is built on web technology. So, Atom is basically like、uh, a really fancy single page website. It's similar to, similar to Google Docs in that way.、Uh, it's built in JavaScript, actually, CoffeeScript,、um, HTML, and CSS, just like any website. So, like, this, is the, this is the Atom's web inspector, just like Chrome's web inspector. And so, as you can see,、uh, like、the entire interface is just HTML and CSS. And you can go in and you can edit things. Uh, in the Web Inspector, just like you can do in Chrome. So it's built just like any website, except it has a lot more power. So here's, here's some of the power that、like、Adam can access the file system, it can access the clipboard, it can adjust the menus, it can load native modules like modules written in C,、um, it can integrate with the operating system so that you can have、like、a right click menu that,、uh, that says open in Atom in Finder. So, but a website can't do any of these things. Like Google Docs can't,、um, it can't write to the file system, it can't read from the file system, it can't integrate with the operating system. So, how do we get this power? How do we have like, the best of both worlds with, this,、uh, with all of the, the web development bits、uh, along with like, the native development bits? So, Atom is built on this thing called Electron. So, what is Electron? It's a tool for building cross platform native apps、uh, with web technology. And so it was developed by us at GitHub、uh, specifically for Atom. And so you have JavaScript and HTML and CSS up here, and it just like, calls into、uh, Electron. So it could say, like, Electron, create a window.、Uh, Electron, like, add menus to this win- window. Electron, like, load this web page. So, So, Electron has all these APIs that can do、uh, native level things. And then Electron is just this abstraction layer over the operating system. So, when you say Electron create a window, it goes in whatever system it's running on and it creates the correct kind of window. So, how does Electron work? How does it do this like, HTML rendering thing? Well, Electron is, is like Chromium and IOJS or Node.js、um, sort of smashed together. It's actually IOJS is controlling Chromium. So when you say、uh, you would have a node script that says, like, create window,、uh, and then, and then、uh, the node script would say, like, Chromium, load this web page, and would, IOJS would go in and tell Chromium to load a web page. So the cool thing is that you get,、uh, you get the, the best of both worlds here. You get the DOM and HTML and CSS、uh, from Chromium and the, and the dev tools. And then you get the entire power of Node. You can use all of the file system APIs.、Um, and you also get access to like 175,000 Node modules on NPM. So there's like a lot of code that you can just use that already exists. So that's how you get the power of, like, of,、uh, of web, web technology in the desktop. So 
what has been made with Electron? I want to I show you guys like, what's possible and how people have used this power. So of course, there's, there's text editors like Atom. There's Atom. Microsoft released one recently called Visual Studio Code. Facebook has one called Nuclide. Um, Facebook Nuclide is actually built on top of Atom. But then there's this robot, and it's called the Jibo. And the Jibo is this, it's, it's a social robot, and so you might say, uh, Jibo, give me soba recipes. And so Jibo would load up a web page full of, full of soba recipes. So this, this Jibo, this little robot, has a screen in it, and that screen runs an Electron app that renders everything. And so this right here is a, is a 3D sphere that's rendered in WebGL on, uh, in the Electron app. So they also wrote all of their development tooling uh, inside, of, inside of Atom. So they built an animation studio. This is an animation studio. They wanted the robot uh, to share the same platform as the development tooling. So another thing is uh, this Electron-based video game editor. It has visual editing tools along with uh, live editing where you can edit code and then it immediately shows up in the game that you're editing. Um, another thing is, is Slack. I see a lot of people here using Slack. Uh, and so their, their Windows app uses Electron. Their Mac app, not quite yet, but their Windows app definitely does. So that's pretty sweet. So, but all of these apps so far, they're pretty heavyweight. They have framed windows. They have a title bar. What if you wanted to create like a menu bar app, something really simple, something really small, like the Dropbox menu bar app or something? But you can do that too. So this is... This is an emoji searcher that's built on top of Electron. Um, it loads up a, a frameless window. Does some emoji searching. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So there's a bunch more examples uh, at these two websites of things that have been built. So now we know what Electron is. We know what's possible with Electron. So let's make an app. So all of you guys can do this right now if you'd like. Um, you just need to clone, uh, you clone this, this sample repo, you CD into it, you bootstrap it, which does an NPM install, and then you run it, and you get this uh, amazing Hello World window. Sweet. So this one takes a bit, because Electron's kind of big. All right. So what does this app look like, and what does the code look like? So you've got two directories in there. You've got a browser directory and you've got this main window directory. And so these are, this is like where most of the action happens, but like what do they mean? What is browser? What is main window? So the way that, uh, the way that Electron apps work is that they have, they have two kinds of processes. They have a browser process and they have renderer processes. So the browser process is the entry point. It's like somebody clicks on the icon in the dock for your app and it creates a browser process. And the browser process um, is not what the user interacts with. The only thing that the browser exists to do is to create these renderer processes. So each window is its own renderer process and then they can talk to each other via IPC. And the renderer process is where like, the user is actually interacting with uh, the HTML and the CSS. So now, if we go back to the code, uh, you can see that like, this is where all the browser code is. It's in the browser directory. And you can see that uh, the renderer process is in the main window. So the way that this works is you have the entry point, main.js. So somebody clicks on your icon in the dock. It loads up main.js. Main.js creates an application. And an application then creates a window, which happens to be a renderer process, and says, load index HTML. And then it loads, ends up loading this file that says hello world. Sweet. So, so now you can write an Electron app. Amazing. But, but this sample app is super boring. So, because it doesn't really do anything. So we want to, let's, let's, let's see one that actually does some stuff. So let's detect some cat faces. So this might be, do a little actual demo here. So this is Kitty Detect. It detects cat faces. So this is, now if we open, this is a, a really easy integration. It just, we're using Electron APIs to, to open this dialog, and then I can 
I can detect a whole bunch of cat faces, maybe. And I found four of them, sweet. <laughs> OK, so well, what about, is this a cat, you guys think? You think it'll detect this? Uh, it tries, but this onsen monkey is not a cat, turns out. OK, so back to this. So we detected some cat faces. So this is Kitty Detect. I wrote it in about two hours. And this is the awesome thing about Electron is that there's a lot of stuff that you can, there's a lot of code out there that you can already use. So I didn't write the actual detection algorithm. All I wrote was the, was the wrapper in Electron to do, the, uh, to do the integrations with, like opening the dialog and that kind of thing. So it uses this Kitty Dar node module that already existed. So you can use any library, any JavaScript library. You can use like Ember, you can use uh, Angular, you can use Knockout, anything that you want can be used in Electron App. Any node module, anything. So I have another little demo for you guys. Let me get out of this. Let's, get, let's kill this. Uh oh. All right. This is a vector drawing application I wrote called Curve. So Curve is it's it's a lot like Illustrator or Sketch, but it's a lot has a lot less features. So it has a pen tool. You can move the heart around. We can adjust. This is really hard to do, by the way. I'm really far away. You can adjust these kinds of things. Um, see, it has menus, but you can't see them. So I'm just going to create a new window, which brings it on the other screen. So this is a new window. And this is, these are render processes, both of these things. So there's two different render processes that my browser process created. So we can, we can draw some rectangles. We can use keyboard shortcuts like O creates ellipses. We can change the color. Pretty sweet. Uh, you can use the pen tool. And yay. So, and then we can save it. So we save it here. And what's cool is that like there's there's a lot of desktop, really easy desktop integrations that you can do with Electron. Like right now it's saved. And so you have this red circle here for the, uh, for the close button, and you have a really dark, uh, you have a really dark icon there. But if I move this, it sets the editor state, or sets the window state to edited. It says that this file has been edited. So like now, if I try to, uh, if I try to get out of here, it like it prompts me, it prompts me to save. So I can save it again. Yay, and we got out of it. Okay. So but. Like, can it, let's, let's say we wanted to open, let's say we wanted to open something that already existed. Oop, it opens it on my screen. This is huge. Sorry about that. This, so this is, a, this is an icon that uh, GitHub uses to indicate, like, upload. So this is an upload icon. What if we wanted to change it to be something else? So this is... A weird perspective. Oh, let's do this. What do you guys think this is going to be? And it's a monkey. <laughs> you guys will never look at the cloud icon ever the same ever again. But onsen monkeys are they're kind of gray, aren't they? And they kind of have like red face. Something like that. Okay, sweet. So we've created an onsen monkey. All right, so oops, let's get out of that. So this is Curve, this Curve app, and it's all open source. So my intention for it is to serve as like a substantial example of an Electron app. Um, it deals with like a bunch of things that you're going to have to potentially deal with in your own application. So it opens and saves. It has keyboard shortcuts. 
Um, it creates new windows. It changes the window state when the file is edited. It prompts to be saved when it's modified. So all of these things are things that you're probably going to have to deal with at some point. And so uh, you can go into Curve, which is the link is up there, and you can steal as much code as, uh, as you need. So the cool thing about this is that it's really, really small because the actual vector drawing uh, is done with a, with a separate library. And so this, li this library is, is up on NPM. If you want to use it, it works in the browser and it works in, uh, in Electron apps. And so this, this shows, again, the power of, of writing an Electron app. Uh, I'm using this, which is an NPM module. I'm also using like, a bunch of libraries that are from Atom. We're using like, the key binding system is from Atom. Uh, the venting system is from Atom. There's a bunch of things that's just like, I've just stolen out of Atom because it already exists. So, so that's it, except for I have a challenge for you guys. I have a challenge. Um, I want you to make an Electron app with Perl. I want somebody out there to make an Electron app with Perl. That sounds probably crazy, uh, but there's this thing called Perlito. And Perlito uh, compiles Perl down to JavaScript. And I, I don't know if it's any good. I don't know <laughs> if it's broken, but it exists. Uh, and so it would be really cool if somebody integrated it into Electron Compile. And now Electron Compile is, uh, is the thing that handles the compilation of, of like CoffeeScript and ES6, like Babel ES6, down to the JavaScript that, uh, that Electron can understand. So if somebody does this, please tell me. Find me on the internet or something and tell me and we'll do something. We'll tweet it at the very least, but you should definitely tell me. I think this would be amazing. Um, and so, so that's all. Um, I'm going to put up this resources page. Any questions? Okay, so the question is, um, I showed examples in CoffeeScript. So is it better to write, uh, write your app in CoffeeScript or ES6 Babel or just vanilla JavaScript? What is the most, uh, like offers the most productivity? And honestly, it's, it's really a personal choice. Like we use CoffeeScript on Atom uh, and there's a lot of like political debate, I guess, around that. Uh, a lot of people don't like CoffeeScript anymore and so, we're actually, we're actually rewriting, or not rewriting, but we're writing a lot of new code in ES6. Um, so a lot of new libraries that we're writing are all in ES6. And I mean, it's, it's just up to you. Uh, we plan on, on creating another example uh, library, just like Electron Sample, but for JavaScript. And I just didn't have time before the talk to actually do that. Um, but we do plan on doing that. So I, I don't have like a good answer. It's just whatever you feel most comfortable in. Out of Electron and Perl 6 ecosystem. Yeah. So what's, what's the question exactly? <laughs> On the Perl challenge, there's already a, 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 a beginning of a, an Atom electron, electron uh, module in the Perl 6 ecosystem. Oh, wow. OK, well, this, the Perl challenge, I guess, already exists. There's already a way to write Perl apps, uh, Electron apps with Perl. Sweet.
Yep. So the, the talk is almost all about uh, electrons. So, and are, are you working on electron as well to some extent? So I don't work on Electron. We have, um, the, the team is super small. We have seven people total working on Atom and Electron. And we actually only have one person writing, uh, working on Electron right now, but we are hiring actually for two people uh, to, to, to help out on the Electron side of things. They're gonna be improving the tooling, improving the documentation, that kind of stuff. So I actually don't work on Electron. I wrote some of the tooling for it. I wrote the example. Uh, and these other examples like, like Curve and Kitty Detect, but, but no, I work full-time on Atom. So, and in writing Atom, uh, it is an electron, uh, for what part, what features uh, do you spend your time most? When I work on, so what do I, uh, what features did I work on most on Atom? Is that the question? No, 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 so, uh, yeah, so, there, so Yep. It, it has a lot of features, yep. and, and, and also maybe it has its own peculiar architecture. So, uh, so I, I want to do a lot of part of use and do most time. So working on Atom, I spend most of my time on, uh, there's a whole bunch of little pieces of it, like find and replace. I wrote the original version of find and replace. I also do a lot of the maintenance on find and replace. I wrote big chunks of autocomplete. I wrote the original like theming system. Uh, I mean, there's like a, just a lot of, I'm, I have my hands in a lot of parts of it. So it's just kind of all over the place. And so, and are you doing your work on Adam right now? So uh, Adam is being worked on Adam right now? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> So it sounds like the question is, can the browser activate Electron apps? Is that, is that correct? Okay, so, so, so yes, it, it can. Uh, there's this thing called a protocol handler. And so we, we actually have an atom colon slash slash protocol where you can, uh, you can load those, those URLs, like an atom URL in the browser and it will, open, uh, it will open atom. So it is possible, it's called a protocol handler. Hang on. So the question is, um, when you use a protocol handler, it generates an alert from, uh, the browser generates an alert. And I think that we should just talk afterwards. So I'm, I'm not sure how to solve that, but we can, we can talk afterwards.